Hey everyone, this is Wilmer from thegameacademy.school. Today we're going to look at the FPS sample project, a demo created by Unity, to show you how you can really push the limits of the game engine to make a professional product. Last year, and I know that sounds like a long time ago, Unity released the FPS sample at Unite 2018. This is a template project to show off the latest tech included with Unity. Now, I've been digging through the FPS sample the last few weeks, mostly for my own educational purposes, but don't be surprised if some bits and pieces of it show up in a future tutorial. Unity has been really generous with the licensing here, so take advantage of that for your own work. You can treat this as a starter project and make a completely new game out of it, or just tear it apart for the bits that are useful to you. There are lots of nice little scripts and art assets bundled inside of this massive, massive demo project. And demo is probably not the best term here. This is a partially complete game, almost taken to commercial level refinement, released with full source and production artwork so that everyone can learn from it. Though there isn't a manual or tutorial to speak of, experienced devs will find it a super useful blueprint or just a fantastic source of ideas. The game itself is a classic multiplayer first person shooter. Think of Quake 3 Arena. The game design is limited, sure, but it has enough polish to show you what a small team with the proper skills can do. Unity has said that six people work for two years on this, with some additional contractors helping out. Now, in case you haven't had a chance to check it out, we've created this quick start guide just so you can get it installed and running on your own machine. Just a warning, you will need several hours to get this project functional, even more if something goes wrong. The FPS sample game has one full level decked out with HDRP assets, one test level, two rig characters, and two game modes. The networking code has been written from the ground up with hybrid ECS. It handles client-side prediction, lag compensation, a lot of pro-level features you would normally only see in a commercial release. In keeping with industry trends, the netcode has been structured around a server authoritative model. We're always going to have one dedicated machine acting as our game server, Having that usually leads to a better gameplay experience. Currently, the project only works on PC and PlayStation 4, though they promise it'll be available on other platforms like the Xbox and Mac as well. When the FPS sample was first shown at Unite Los Angeles, the art and programming teams had separate talks detailing the specific challenges that went into creating this project. If you missed those, they are a great watch, so definitely check them out while you're installing the repository from GitHub. And currently, GitHub is the only way to download the project, so it's important that you have Git and Git with LFS, or large file storage, installed on your machine. If you use SourceTree, that client application comes bundled with both of those, so you're good to go. Make a blank folder if you want to control what the project directory will be named. Find the FPS repository on GitHub, and there are installation instructions on this front page as well. You won't be able to download the repo as a zip file under the green button. You'll just end up wasting time if you do that. It won't work. Instead, you'll need to use the URL provided. So just copy that link. In SourceTree's clone dialog, add the repository URL to the first field. Browse for your destination path, and it should automatically fill in the name of your directory. And the local folder should just say root. Hit clone, and then hurry up and wait you are copying an 18 gig repository. Depending on your internet speed, this could be a while. Just let it run. Hit show full output if you wanna see its progress. Mine took about 45 minutes to an hour or so, even with relatively fast broadband. Again, just a perfect time to watch one of those videos from Unite LA. If you did this correctly, the project should be quite large. Even though the original repository is a meager 18 gigs, the downloaded project on my machine with all of the extra supporting files tops out around almost 50 gigs. Now that is a big project. Double check on the GitHub page what version of Unity the sample project was built with. You can avoid any unexpected errors if you just stick with using the same exact version. The particular project I downloaded was created with Unity 2018.3 beta version 12. And I had to get the installation from the Unity beta site directly since it was no longer available in the Unity Hub from the official beta releases. But once you have that correct Unity version installed, you can just open the project normally. Again, it will take some time to import all the assets. Just let the progress bar run its course. I think it may have taken my machine another half hour or so. 
When it finishes, you should see something like this. And there's lots of stuff in here, so don't be intimidated. Unfortunately, in this beta version of Unity 2018.3, there is a bug that we need to deal with. We need to re-import some of our models and shaders. And this is specific to this beta, and we hope that the need for this goes away in the future. But for now, in the Project tab, filter for T colon model in the search field. Select all the game objects that come up. Right click and re-import to re-import them into the project. And this will take a while. After that's done, finally, search for first person projection in this search field. There should be four shaders that come up. Highlight those and re-import them. There'll just be some small shader errors if you don't do that. But finally, we should be able to explore the project. The devs have configured everything so you don't need to load the scenes or build manually. If you happen to go to the file build settings, don't build from here. Instead, we'll handle a lot of this from a custom UI that they've created for us. Go to FPS Sample, Windows, Project Tools. The different gameplay levels in the project are available at the top of the dialog. If you want to preview a level, you can simply click the Open button next to the level name. That will load the level and then do some pre-processing. Once that appears in the editor, you can enter play mode. That puts you in a special preview where you can take the FPS controller for a spin and just walk through the level. The server isn't active and there aren't any opponents, but this is a good way to see the level layout as if you were indeed playing. This is level 00, which is a simplified gray box layout just for diagnostic purposes. We don't have the full on detailed environment here, but you can test the basic weapons and movement. To generate an executable, we'll need to build asset bundles. And sorry, this is another very time intensive step. You do that with the button that says all force. This essentially serializes all of the objects in your project and writes them to disk for easier access, as well as generating some resource binaries for that executable. The first time you do this, it will recompile all of the shaders in the project, and that is slow. I will kid you not. Again, this is a great time to watch a video as your progress bar just crawls along. I think this time it took maybe 30 to 40 minutes on my machine, but honestly, I think I lost count. Once it's finally done, make sure that it says building for standalone Windows 64 right here. You should be able to leave everything else at default and then just hit build game. This will generate an executable file automatically. Again, this is another very slow process. Find something to do and then come back in 30 to 45 minutes. When it finishes, you'll actually have a build of the game. You can locate it by clicking the open build folder button. Your file explorer should pop open and you'll see that it creates an EXE called auto build. You could just double click this to launch it just like any other application on Windows, but this version is really designed to be controlled by the quick start menu at the bottom of the project tools dialog, this section down here. This is just a helper UI to launch the auto build EXE with the proper server commands. It can also open a number of clients as well, just for testing. For example, let me switch the mode to multiplayer, select the level. I'll choose level one since that's the cool one with all the high definition assets. For clients, I'm gonna run two clients on one machine just so you can see how multiplayer will work. Go ahead and check headless server. So the server is just a text-based console with no graphics. We won't use the editor for anything, but you could use it as a server or a client. We're actually just gonna use the build that we made on disk. So the editor will be unused. And then you can just leave all the server commands at the bottom. Those are what you would type in the console to launch the game and connect the clients. I'm simulating having two game sessions for two different players on one machine. However, I can only control one player at a time. So the player that I'm currently not focused on will just show up as idling within the game. You can see the environment is nicely detailed using the HD render pipeline. There's lots of great lighting and shading work going on. By the team's own admission, however, the particle effects are incomplete. This FPS sample is a work in progress and they will be periodically putting out updates as they continue developing it. But here it is, a fully functional network multiplayer game with full source, no DLLs, no special custom builds of the game engine, just out of the box, take vanilla Unity and push it to its limit.
Note that my video performance is a little choppy because of the screen recording. This is not a super fast PC. It's about four years old with a GTX 1060 graphics card. Not top of the line by any stretch of the imagination, but not super slow either. Nowadays, it's a pretty typical Windows box. If you need to, you can always dial down the graphics settings from the menu if it's too laggy. Anyway, even with just one player, it's fun just exploring the beautiful environments. But in theory, you can connect up to 16 players with this demo. I'm currently running the auto build executable that is managed by this Windows Project Tools dialog. If you want to build a completely standalone build, you can go to FPS Sample, Build System, Win64, and then create a Windows Build 64. Again, it takes some time, go do something else and come back and check your machine later. When it's finished, you should have an extra folder in your FPS sample called Builds. Drill down in here, you'll find a standalone Windows 64 subfolder. Inside of that, another subfolder. And here is the FPS sample EXE. You can copy this whole directory to another machine and just deploy the executable from there. This is a completely standalone binary. The main difference between this one and the auto build is it has a more complete menu. The auto build will launch you into a bootloader console by default. This build will give you a prettier intro menu with the Terraformer character jumping in the view. Instead of using the console commands to start a server or join a game in progress, you have a nicer UI to do that. You can use the join game and create game menu items to join or host a game. The matchmaking service isn't functional yet as of this recording, I don't think. They did announce a partnership with Google last year that is in the works, but as long as you can connect your machines, you should be able to run network play, either on a local network, or if you have the ability to punch through your router, you should be able to connect to a remote client or server as well. If I create a game, it will launch me into level 01. I don't have anyone to play against, but if you get some of your friends together, you should be able to play through one of the two different game modes. Launch another session of the executable, join the server that you just created, and you should have a multiplayer session going in no time. Once you've gone through the game levels and modes a few times, now the real fun begins. Dive in and pick apart each component of the project and see how it was created. Unfortunately, the code is not really well documented, but there is a dedicated forum to help you with any installation problems or if you have any questions in general about the project. Well, that's all we have time for this week. If you want to see more specific topics about this project or others, ping me on the gameacademy.school site. Until the next video, be sure to check out our blog or our premium courses for more game dev tips and tricks. All right, thanks for watching and have fun in the arena.